Today we will discuss osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a common medical problem which in future would increase and would be additive factor for multiple associated comorbidities. The number is expected to increase as our population age increases. Osteoporosis is decreased bone mass secondary to uncoupling of osteoclast osteoblast bone remodeling mechanism. This results in less matrix of the bone but mineralization is unaltered and remain the same. In other words, it is a qualitative defect. The patient will have increased porosity in their cancellous bones and thin out trabecular network. This decrease in bone mass predisposes patient for fragility fractures, which are seen in vertebral bodies, hip fracture, and wrist fractures. The incidence of osteoporosis is more in females when compared to the male population. It is 4 ratio 1. Regarding the risk factors of our osteoporosis, white race, female gender, European descent, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, alcoholism, medicine like phenytoin, diet low in calcium and vitamin D, and premature menopause are some of the risk factors. In general, osteoporosis can be further divided into two main groups or population, which are different in character and demographics. Type 1 osteoporosis is a postmenopausal entity. A woman aged 50 to 70 years has a predilection, as this is the age of menopause. Type 2 osteoporosis is a senile type osteoporosis, which occurs during the second decade, seventh decade, and then after. Uh, there is also an entity called secondary osteoporosis. This occurs secondarily to some other disease or factors like alcoholism or chronic steroid use. Most patients with osteoporosis land in trauma bay as fragility fractures. Having a fragility fracture by itself is the highest risk factor for sustaining another fragility fracture in future. Proper workup is needed as well as managing these fractures because 30% or less would return to their normal activity of daily living after sustaining such fractures of the hip and there is also mortality rate which is around 20% which is significantly high. Type 1 postmenopausal osteoporosis are generally received as distal radius fractures and vertebral body fractures while type 2 senile osteoporosis are generally received as hip fractures. So if a patient received, in, these patients should undergo proper laboratory workup and imaging studies. Radiograph by itself can show osteoporosis, but a bone loss of about 30% is needed before a simple radiograph can identify osteoporosis. Another modality is DEXA scan. It is a most sensitive and specific imaging modality while considering di diagnosis of osteoporosis. Typically, the bone density at the lumbar spine and the hip are measured, both scores are compiled, and the patient bone mineral density is assigned a score. T-score is a patient bone mineral density relative to the young, healthy individual. Z-score is a patient bone mineral density relative to similar age match control. Regarding T-score between minus 1 and minus 2.5 is considered as osteopenia. T-score less than minus 2.5 is considered as osteoporosis. FRAC score is another scoring system implemented by World Health Organization. It takes account of multiple variables and risk factors to calculate a patient 10 years risk of hip fracture or major osteoporosis related event. Some fra factors considered in FRACs are age, sex, height, previous fractures, parents fracture hip, smoking history or current smoking, glucocorticoid used, rheumatoid arthritis, secondary osteoporosis risk, alcohol, 3 or more units per day, 
femoral neck bone mass density as a form of grams per centimeter square. It will give a 10 year risk of fragility fracture as a percentage. So which patient having osteoporosis need medical treatment? Postmenopausal post women or men above 50 having the following factors should be considered for treatment. Number one, prior hip or vertebral body fracture. Those patients who have T-score less than minus 2.5 at the level of femoral neck or spine. Patient having T-score of minus 1 to minus 2.5 and a 10-year risk via FRAC stool of greater than 3%. And fourth, major osteoporosis related major event risk via FRAX more than 20%. So when you diagnose osteoporosis, how are you treat it? Most patients who are diagnosed as a case of osteoporosis who needs medical attention as per the criteria mentioned will have vitamin D and calcium supplements. Calcium is given in the form of tablets and the dose is 1200 to 1500 milligram per day. Vitamin D is given as 800 to 1000 international units per day. Other medical treatment is biphosphonates. Bi basically biphosphonates inhibit osteoclast bone resorption. There are two classes based on presence or absence of nitrogen group. The nitrogen containing biphosphonates bisphosphonates are 1000 fold more effective than non-nitrogenous bisphosphonates. Pamidronate, residronate, alendronate and zoledronic acid are commonest used nitrogens uh, containing bisphosphonates. Nitrogen containing bisphosphonate basically inhibit protein prenylation with the, within the myelinolate pathway blocking final cell pyrophosphatase synthetase. This causes loss of guanosine triphosphate GTPase formation and this which is needed for ruffle border formation of osteoclast and cell survival as well. So once it is inhibited, the ruffle border mechanism is disrupted and there is no formation of ruffle borders in osteoclast. Non-nitrogen containing bisphosphonates are actually metabolized to a non-functional ATP analog which hampers cell energy supply and causes cell death. The commonest side effects of, uh, of bisphosphonates is osophagitis, some gastric issues and dysphagia. Other uh, complications are osteonecrosis of a jaw, of jaw which, is, which is seen in intravenous bisphosphonates. Prolonged use of bisphosphonates also has known to cause atypical femur fracture. This can be suspected with patient having used bisphosphonates with an insidious history of thigh or hip pain, radiology showing lateral cortical thickening around subtrochanteric region and transverse fracture patterns. Another modality or medical treatment is teriparatide, which is available commercially as Fortio. It is an N-terminal sequence of parathormone, PTH, and it is administered subcutaneously daily injections. This can also be used in osteoporosis and its use has been nowadays more common in spinal surgeons to avoid pseudarthrosis. One concern is that it can develop osteosarcoma in patients with paget disease and should be avoided in paget disease. Another medical therapy is denosumab also known as, with the name of Prolio and it worked by binding with rank ligand prior to it being attached to the rank receptors. So what is the difference between osteoporosis and osteomalacia? A patient with osteoporosis has, in, has same, same unmineralized mineral content means that the unmineral, unmineralized content remains normal, while in osteomalacia mineralization is reduced. Osteoporosis is common in old age disease or at menopause, while osteomalacia can 
occur in any age after adolescence. Cause can be endocrine abnormalities, age, inactivity or disuse or alcoholism in osteoporosis. While in osteomalacia it is vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D pathway abnormalities. Another fact is that osteoporosis patient will come with pain at the fracture area or a region where there is high risk of fracture. While osteomalacia patient will have a generalized pain around the joints area of lower limb. The other fact is that osteoporosis has more axial pre predominance while osteomalacia is appendicular skeletal disease. While doing lab work on osteoporosis, mostly calcium uh, phosphate and alkaline phosphate, phosphorus and alkaline phosphatase are normal. While in osteomalacia, calcium may be reduced or increased or may be normal. Similarly, phosphate can, phosphorus can be low. Alkaline phosphatase are mostly elevated except hypophosphatasia. Uh, another uh, investigation which can be done is biopsy, which is tetracycline labeled and is normal in osteoporosis, while it is abnormal in osteomalacia. Thank you.